Panther Nation, Draft Family, what's good with y'all, man? Welcome to another edition of Mock Draft Monday, and today we got a good one. This is a special one. This has been highly requested, uh, and today I got y'all. I got y'all. As you can see, I'm not uh, at the crib. I'm reporting live uh, from Florida uh, with my family on spring break. And listen, uh, today, this is going to be the YouTuber's mock, okay? This is where I decide to reach out to a YouTuber from each team. They're going to pick for their squad. No trades. Uh, no funny business. This is straight picks, uh, and we're gonna pick who they think uh, their teams will pick, or who the best fit is there for their team. Okay. Um, and listen, first I gotta give a shout out to all the YouTubers involved. I appreciate y'all for taking the time out, and you can show your appreciation by hitting the subscribe button for their channels. All the content, uh, all their content information will be in the description box. So y'all go ahead, link up with your team, hit the subscribe subscribe button for them, and uh, do that duty. All right. Now. First of all, I gotta give a shout out to One Ball and Lapagus. They are the Vikings channel. Uh, they inspired this content. Uh, they had me do one uh, maybe a month or so ago, and I'm just returning the favor since uh, you know the trade went down. Things have changed. Um, we're gonna update this. We're getting a little bit closer to the, the draft, so I, I felt like it was time for us to update this. So I'm gonna host this one. Uh, and again, this is inspired from uh, One Ball and Lapagus, the Vikings. Okay, so shout out to them. They're in this. Appreciate y'all. Okay, now. Again, make sure you, before we get into it, make sure you hit the subscribe button on this channel. We're like 60 viewers away from 10,000, which is a huge milestone. So please go ahead and hit that, hit that subscribe button, all right? Let's get into it. This is Bentley Brown of the Drunken Jaguar podcast, an SB Nation and Big Cat Country podcast of Jaguars fans in exile. With the first pick of the 2021 NFL Draft, we are proud to select quarterback just oh, Trevor Lawrence of Clemson. <laughs> of course, you'll hear that Trevor Lawrence is the most promising quarterback prospect since the likes of Andrew Luck and Peyton Manning and John Elway. But don't tell my co-host, I said, I think we're picking Trevor Lawrence because we really have no choice. I mean, peer pressure alone, the psychological repercussions of not picking T-Law. Can you imagine? Come on. Anyway. Uh, I said, we'll be back with our next pick of the first round. We've got one later on. Check in with you then. Hey, what's going on? I am Matt O'Leary here with the Jets pick. Second overall, I have Zach Wilson going to the Jets. They need a new quarterback in here. Sam Darnold has underachieved. Yes, it's been issues with the coaching as well. It's a very complicated situation, but they need to restart the rookie clock and go with somebody fresh. And to me, Zach Wilson is someone who can make every throw on the football field, has a very quick release, and I think this is someone the Jets have been high on for a very long time. I could potentially see Justin Fields going here, but I think just all the tea leaves if you read them it looks like it's going to be zach wilson who let's face it would be really good in a san francisco style of offense he's run a ton of play action can throw on the run his traits are very exciting coming to the next level and i think it would make a lot of sense for the new york jets to grab the quarterback out of byu with the second pick i'm Ant. i'm horst and i'm alex and we're the 49ers cutback and now the 49ers have made the big trade to move up to three. We have a big decision to make because we need to go quarterback. But two of them are already gone. So now it's, is it Lance, is it Fields, or is it Mac Jones? I think they all three have great qualities. But I think, in my personal opinion, one of those guys stands much further out than the other two. I think we all kind of agree with that, which is why at pick number three for the San Francisco 49ers, we're going to be selecting quarterback out of. Ohio State University, Justin Fields, guys. Yeah, Justin Fields is a fantastic player. What a great arm. Uh, he can do it all. He's so athletic. His pro day was ridiculous. But I think coming into this draft, everyone thought he was the second best guy until Zach Wilson had his you know season that he had. Mm -hmm. But Justin Fields is a great player. Absolutely. Very excited to bring him into San Francisco. Hopefully he's uh, the insurance policy in case something happens to Jimmy G. We got a big year coming up. NFC West, here we come, baby. Championship. Look at here, I got a pick for you that might make you sip your moonshine twice. My name is Big Low Country, representing the Atlanta Falcons, and with the fourth pick, the Atlanta Falcons select Kyle Pitts from the University of Florida, tight end. 
Let me tell you something, but it ain't no secret that the Atlanta Falcons were four and twelve last year. But with that fourth pick, I just legitimately couldn't see any needs that needed to be filled that I would reach that high for. So I said to myself, self, why not go with the generational talent? So he's a big athletic tight end that can block. He can run every route in the route tree. He reminds me of Shannon Sharp, old Uncle Shan Shan. Kyle Pitts, welcome to the Atlanta Falcons. Whether you like, love, or hate the pick, make sure that you stop by my page as Big Low Country Sports. And I'm sorry, I'm from the country, so it's spelled K-U-N-T-R-Y. And make sure you leave a comment, man. I reply to all comments. And make sure that you do a country boy a favor and subscribe. What in the world, bro? Hey everyone, Anthony Cazenza with CincyJungle.com and the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast, bringing you the number five overall pick for the Cincinnati Bengals in the PNP 2021 mock draft. The Bengals will select Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. A lot of people think that the Cincinnati Bengals will and should pick an offensive lineman with this pick. However, I think given the ownership's track record of liking athletic, talented wide receivers and the fact that there is the chemistry between Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow that blossomed in 2019. Yes, Jamar Chase sat out 2020. However, his workout numbers were fantastic. He seems to be a blue chip prospect. And, oh, by the way, the Bengals lost three wide receivers in free agency this year i think jamar chase is the pick and the Bengals go offensive line in rounds two and further beyond in the rest of the draft with the sixth pick in the 2021 nfl draft the miami dolphins select wide receiver Devontae smith out of Alabama. With Jamar Chase already off the board, I think the Miami Dolphins get the second best wide receiver in this draft class. Smith, the 2020 Heisman Trophy winner, was very productive at Alabama. 37 total touchdowns as a junior and senior combined receiving. 23 receiving touchdowns his senior year. Put on that show in the first half of the national championship game. And I think his soft hands, crisp route running, Big play potential and big time speed is exactly what the Miami Dolphins need as part of their offense moving forward. His familiarity with Miami Dolphins quarterback Tua Tungavailoa is just a bonus as well. So I think the Miami Dolphins hit a home run here with this pick and are happy to land Devontae Smith, number six overall. For all of your Miami Dolphins news and information, please go to DolphinsTalk.com and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Dolphins Talk. All right, everybody, settle down, settle down, settle down. Um, I'm Malcolm. I am one of the co-hosts for the Pride Podcast, a Detroit Lions podcast. You can find us on Spotify, um, Apple. And with the seventh overall pick, the 2021 NFL Draft, I have the Detroit Lions selecting Penny Sewell, offensive tackle, Oregon. Go Lions. One pride. Now, y'all know I had to do the pick for the Panthers, all right? So with the eighth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Trey Lance. Yes, one of the quarterbacks fell to us, and we're going to scoop him. Now, I know this is a, a hot topic for the Panthers and Panther Nation. Uh, a lot of people don't like Trey Lance. A lot of people don't think he's ready. Um, but listen, I think this is a pick that fits Matt Rule's mantra. He wants the talent. Give him the numbers. Give him the six foot five, two hundred twenty pound quarterback. Let him figure it out. He's gonna pull the talent out of your guy, and I feel like that's what you have with Trey Lance. He's raw. He's gonna have a chance to sit. Teddy's gonna be the guy next year. We all know it. Most of y'all don't like it, but the, the truth of the matter is that Teddy Bridgewater is going to be the starter next year. Now, that being said, you draft Trey Lance, sit him for a year, then twenty twenty one. You let him rock. You let him rock. He's going to be your guy moving forward. So I think it's a good pick uh, to go ahead and pick Trey Lance, address uh, offensive line in the second round, later rounds. But you got to do it. Trey Lance fell to you. You take him. All right. That being said, y'all know you already know where to find me. You on the channel. All right. Hit that subscribe button for your boy. I'm out. Peace. Hey, everyone. This is Carl Dumbler with My High Huddle. 
With the ninth pick in the NFL draft, the Denver Broncos select Rashawn Slater, an offensive tackle of Northwestern. The top four quarterbacks being gone was a difficult thing to see, but a nice consolation prize is the Broncos now having both tackle spots locked down for the next four to five years to protect whoever plays quarterback in the Mile High City. Slater brings a very polished overall game with athleticism running a 4-8-8-40 and a 7-4-8 second three-cone drill. This shows up in big ways on film. He is one that showed he could handle both power and speed rushers where he was able to mix up his technique along the way to keep passers, pass rushers off balance. Slater being added to the mix gives the Broncos one of the top offensive lines in football and would allow any young quarterback to come in and find success early and often. Make sure you head on over to milehighhuddle.com where we provide some of the best draft content around. Also follow me on Twitter at Carl Dumbler, MHH and at BTB football pod. What's up, Cowboys Nation? It's your boy, Jay Tuck, representing the Cowboys fans only YouTube channel. CFO gang, we are in the building. And with the 10th pick of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Patrick Sertain, junior quarterback out of the University of Alabama. Now, this pick has been very controversial amongst Dallas Cowboys fans. It's been a split. And to be honest, if it was just me making the pick, I would have chose J.C. Horn, but I reached out as a family. We all voted. It was about 50% Patrick Sertain, 49 for J.C. Horn. So I'm a fair guy. We decided to go with Patrick Sertain Jr., man. So Patrick Sertain, he is a versatile corner. He fits Dan Quinn's scheme um, in the 4-3 under scheme, being a cover three guy. He's very good in, in zone coverage. He can tackle. He's very cerebral. He's smart. He can play downfield. And he's a tall, lengthy guy that a lot of Dallas Cowboys fans are excited about, pairing him with his old caller's teammate, Trayvon Diggs. So the pick is in. Patrick Sertain Jr. represented the star, man, and welcome to Dallas. It's your boy, Jay Tuck. Follow me on Twitter at JTuck151. And also comment, like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Cowboys Fans Only. Pat Sertain, let's get it, man. PS2, let's go. What's going on, YouTube? With the 11th pick in the NFL draft, the New York Giants will select Jalen Waddle. I think he gives them the best value at this spot. With Rashawn Slater gone, I don't think that there's an offensive lineman worth taking over Jalen Waddle. Kyle Pitts is gone. Jamar Chase is gone. So at this point, you just have to take the best player on the board. It'll be between Waddle and a pass rusher, and I think Jalen Waddle is far and away better than any pass rusher that's on the board and pretty much any pass rusher in this draft. And I want to give a huge shout out to Panther Nation Podcast for having me on the channel. I appreciate you for bringing me on. Uh, you can find me at Diggy546, D-I-G-G-E-546, on Twitter, YouTube, everywhere. Come check me out. What's going on, you guys? It's your boy, Joe Castro, a.k.a. Philly Fresco of Philly Philly the Podcast. Shout out to my guys over at PMP asking me to do my draft magic at number 12. Now, if you have been following the Philadelphia Eagles, obviously we did trade out of that number six pick. Not something a lot of Eagles fans are happy about, but we are in the position to grab somebody that's good. So at number six, you can ask them, I was going to do what my subscribers wanted me to do. But at number 12, all bets are off. And we are going with a guy that I've been in love with since the beginning of this draft process. And that is Micah Parsons. And we need a great linebacker. I think he can be that guy. So shout out to my guys. I hope this helped. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the other picks, man. But y'all know what it is. It's always fly. Eagles fly. And we are out yet. Peace. I'm Elliot Bermudez from the Charged Up Bolts podcast. And I'm picking for the LA Chargers at 13. Now, most of Chargers social media seems to think it's a done deal. We're taking a left tackle in the first round, but I'm not buying it. It's not happening. Penny Sewell and Rashawn Slater have already gone in this mock. And last season, Justin Herbert became the greatest rookie of all time behind a terrible O-line that's already been improved this offseason. We're not doing it. There's a bigger need for the Chargers at cornerback. We got rid of Casey Hayward. Michael Davis is not good enough to be a starting cornerback one in this league. We need help immediately. So at the 13th pick, the Chargers are selecting J.C. Horn, cornerback 
out of South Carolina. The guy is a baller. Three years of consistent improvement, great hands, gets turnovers, needs to improve his tackling a little bit, but he's the perfect pick for the Chargers. You can find me at Charged Up Pod or listen to our podcast anywhere you get your podcasts from. All right, what's up, everyone? This is One Bar from the One Bar and Lepagish Show, where we follow the Minnesota Vikings, Vikings videos every damn day. And uh, very excited to be part of the mock draft here. Um, looking at the board, unfortunately, this is the way I kind of see it shaking out on draft day. So no real big surprises or anybody really sniped as far as who I was hoping the Vikings would land. Um, as always, in every mock draft, I'm hoping some way, somehow, Rashawn Slater falls into the lap of the Minnesota Vikings. Denver Broncos dash that dream for us. And then uh, as far as the receivers are concerned, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, they, they crept up, but we're just gonzo right off the bat. But let's talk about who is there for the Vikings at 14. Um, you're always seeing the edge rushers. You're seeing Quiddy Pay. You're seeing Greg Rousseau um, always linked to the Vikings. Edge rushers still definitely need. Also offensive line, Derrissa is still on the board, which is going to be a little bit tempting. Um, but I'm going with a different guy at pick 14. It's not sexy, but it's got teeth. I am going with the offensive lineman from USC, Elijah Vera Tucker, um, offensive tackle slash guard. Vikings would chuck him in at guard day one, day one starter, day one upgrade. Uh, Vikings fans know what we had at guard last year. Um, this would be an immediate upgrade. Uh, also gives you the versatility. He, he has played tackle. And guards, so maybe down the road, you play around with that a little bit. But this allows us to put Ezra Cleveland out at left tackle, keep Brian O'Neill at right tackle, Elijah Barrett Tucker at guard, and then you got Bradbury at center. So then we only got to deal with one more position to fill out, hopefully in the coming rounds. But yes, the pick officially, Elijah Barrett Tucker, and I am very excited. <sighs> What is going on, y'all? Patriots Global here. If you guys do want to get more from me, you guys can find me over on YouTube at Patriots Global for everything New England Patriots or on Instagram at Patriots.Global, Twitter, Patriots Global 2. Now, with the 15th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, I have my New England Patriots selecting quarterback Mac Jones. Now, obviously, you can see that all the other quarterbacks did get selected. I think that there are top five quarterbacks that are uh, having the ability to be franchise quarterbacks. Mac Jones, of course, being one of those top five guys. And with the other four being taken, of course, that only leaves New England with one guy. But Mac Jones seems like a great fit in New England. A very, very accurate passer, takes care of the ball, and just that classic pocket passer that Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots coaching staff loves. The New England Patriots get their franchise quarterback.